And here are some of your stories in brief. We begin with President Mohamed Dubari. He's received the report of the Technical Advisory Committee on implementation of the national minimum wage. On receiving the report, uh, Chairman assured them that he would speedily review the report and may require further input to some members of the committee. Elsewhere, the Nigerian Army Investigative Committee on Election Violence has taken their investigation to Abonima, where killings were recorded during the presidential and national assembly elections, including the killing of a senior army officer. The chairman of the committee is assuring the people of their safety as women and youth lament their situation. Well, let's get some more on the Bochi governorship election and the aftermath. Our correspondent, Hajar Ali, joins us live. Uh, Hajar, always good to see you. I guess there's a relief for the people of Bochi State since the announcement. The political conscious, consciousness of the average voter in Bochi State manifested clearly with the victory for the opposition and the defeat of an incumbent governor. This is the first time it is happening in Bochi State since the return of, of democracy. The victory and the defeat did not come as a surprise for many, uh, for the average man on the street in Bochi State. For many, it was a victory and a defeat foretold even before the result for Tafa Balewa local government area was collated. I'm being joined by the governor-elect of Bauchi State, former minister of, um, the F former FCT minister and a former senator, Bala Muhammad. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Hajera. How did the victory come to you given the legal tussle? might have to come back to Hadera there, a bit of some uh, network problems. But let's also inform you, the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council, they've written a petition to the Inspector General of Police and the Director General of the Department of State Services to investigate the main opposition PDP over its alleged admittance of illegal access to INEX server. Now, according to a statement by the Director, of strategic communications of the council, Mr. Fessus Kiamo, the APC is alleging that the PDP did not only make outlandish claims in his case uh, filed before the elections petition tribunal, the party claims they also made reference to the INEX server. The APC is also accusing the PDP of hacking into the INEX server and imputing false figures. He therefore called on security agencies to respond to the petition Immediately, the APC says the only means by which they could have access to the INEX server is by the criminal hacking of a server or through the criminal conspiracy of some INEC officials. Well, the People's Democratic Party has not taken the allegations lightly uh, that its members hack INEX server. Now, the party in a statement says the APC is jittery and has asked President Mohamed Jabari and the All Progressives Congress to stop their unnecessary fabrication smear campaign and prepare to face its legal team at the presidential election tribunal. The PDP went further to say President Bari is overweighed by the burden of illegitimacy following overwhelming evidence before the tribunal that the facts and issues touching on the INEX server are already within the public domain and Nigerians are already uh, within, already at home rather with them. In Bainway State, the state chapter of the All Progressives Congress, they have resolved to challenge the outcome of the governorship and state assembly elections over what it describes as massive rigging and intimidation of its supporters during the polls. At a press conference in Makodi, the state capital, the running mate to the APC governorship candidate, Mr. Sam Ode, while reading the communique, called on civil servants to wait a little longer for better days when the APC reclaims its mandate through the tribunal.
that is the reaction to the victory of the APC in Kano State. Meanwhile, the Kano State Governor, winner of the governorship election, Mr. Abdullahi Gandhuja, is assuring the people of Kano State that his administration will continue to remain committed in fine-tuning, consolidating and the initiation of the new developmental projects for the overall development of the state. Addressing a press conference to deliver his victory speech, Mr. Gandhuja assured that he will devote himself to bringing a greater prosperity by building on what he started since 2015. Well, the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in Kano State, Mr. Yusuf Abba, and other party stalwarts have rejected the results from INEC and expressed grievances on what happened at the polls. Now, the People's Democratic Party candidate has decried the incidents and uh, outcome of the governorship elections and is hoping to seek redress in the law court. It's for us to go to court. Uh, we have mobilized all our lawyers and they are here very much busy collating all the evidences we have on the ground. We expect the tribunal to be, um, uh, you know, um, to, 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 to give us, uh, you know, uh, every necessary support in terms of, uh, you know, justice for whoever deserves uh, to have that. Uh, we expect our mandate to be uh, retrieved from these uh, people, and we expect that uh, justice generally is going to be done. Let's go over to Emo State. The governor, Mr. Rocha Sokrota, has asked INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, to without further delay present him with a certificate of return as the senator elect for the Emo West Senatorial District election. Addressing newsmen at the government house in the Rio, the Emo State capital, the governor says INEC does not have any moral or constitutional justification for withholding his certificate of return by acting on mere allegation by the returning officer, Professor Innocent Ibabuchi, who might be playing a script by his political enemies. He urged INEC to release his certificate of return so the issue will not cause any constitutional and political problem for the country in the future. I can't understand, really, I can't understand, I mean I can understand how a mere allegation of somebody, an individual, talking about duress, which has not been proven by anybody, will stop INEC from giving me my certificate of return for election that I want properly. Uh, INEC has, has no moral justification to release certificate of, certificate of returns to, to somebody who knowingly flouted the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And why refusing to give somebody a certificate who won't duly an, in, an individual uh, 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 complaint? Well, that's it on lunchtime politics for now. Of course, the conversation continues via social media. Uh, tweet at us at TTV Politics, at Channels Television, especially that interview with the Senator-elect of Bochi State. Many thanks for watching. I'm Minister Walker.